Hey guys, welcome back to K Crime Documentary. Today we are going to take a look at another horrific case with you. Would you dare to stare into the eyes of a welcome to a tale that defies belief? A tale that pushes the boundaries of the imaginable? This is the story of a man named Gregory Scott Hale, a resident of the peaceful town of Summitville, Tennessee. Now, however, he resides in a prison cell, serving a life sentence for a crime that is as shocking as it is revolting. In 2014, Hale was found guilty of not just the murder of Lisa Marie Hyder, but also an act so barbaric it's hard to fathom, cannibalism. Yet, what makes this tale even more chilling is a recent letter, penned by Hale himself. In this letter Hale is pleading to share his side of the story. He confesses to his crimes yet critiques the media's portrayal of him. Accusing the press of bias, he insists that his love of horror and gore was not an obsession, but a misunderstood fascination. So who is Gregory Hale truly? The man who accuses the media of twisting his narrative? As we plunge into the disturbing truth of this case, we aim to untangle the complex web of Hale's life, his unimaginable crime, and his extraordinary request for his voice to be heard. One can't help but ask what secrets lie behind the monstrous facade of Gregory Scott Hale. Stay tuned and find out. Gregory Scott Hale, a man with a disturbing past, now wants his voice heard. An individual whose history is as chilling as the crimes he committed, Hale's life was a twisted journey that ultimately led to a horrifying climax. Raised in the quiet town of Summitville, Hale's early fascination with the macabre set him apart. He had an obsession with horror, an interest that was not merely recreational. From an early age he was drawn to the darkest corners of the human psyche, a fascination that would later manifest in a gruesome fashion. As he grew older, Hale's interest in horror took a darker turn. His online presence was filled with disturbing posts about cannibalism. He consumed content related to the subject, shared it, and even discussed it openly. This fixation was more than just a morbid curiosity. It was an obsession that would eventually lead him down a path of unimaginable violence. In the summer of 2014, Hale's fascination with horror culminated in the murder of Lisa Marie Hyder. A mother of six, Hyder crossed paths with Hale at a liquor store. Little did she know that this chance encounter would mark the end of her life. Hale lured Hyder back to his home, where he committed unspeakable acts of violence. The aftermath of the crime was as horrific as the act itself. Hale dismembered Hyder's body, kept parts of her remains, and burned the rest in his backyard. His actions were not driven by a momentary lapse of judgment or a fit of rage. They were the result of a deeply ingrained fascination with the grotesque, a fascination that had been brewing within him for years. In a shocking confession, Hale admitted to consuming part of Hyder's remains. This revelation sent waves of disgust and horror through the community, marking Hale as a monster in the eyes of the public. But what led Hale to commit such a gruesome act? The answer to this question lies in the dark corners of Hale's mind, a place where horror was not just a genre, but a way of life. June 6, 2014, a day that would forever change the lives of two individuals. On this day, a chilling encounter took place at a local liquor store. Gregory Scott Hale, a man with a disturbing history and an eerie fascination with the macabre, met Lisa Hyder, a mother of six. Unbeknownst to Hyder, this chance meeting would quickly spiral into a horrifying series of events. Hale, a man who had previously expressed an interest in cannibalism and had a known obsession with serial killer Richard Ramirez, made the fateful decision to invite Hyder back to his house. The reason for this invitation remains a subject of speculation. Some suggest Hale was driven by his dark fantasies, while others believe it was a spur-of-the-moment decision fueled by a sinister impulse. Once at Hale's house the situation took a gruesome turn. The details of what transpired are grisly and difficult to recount. It's believed that Hale and Hyder engaged in sexual activity before a violent attack took place. Hale, in a horrifying act of brutality, murdered Hyder. But the horror did not end there. Following the murder, Hale dismembered Hyder's body. This was not a hasty act of disposal but a calculated move that reflected Hale's twisted desires. He kept some of her remains, intending to consume them, and burned the rest in his backyard. This act of desecration revealed the true extent of Hale's depravity, painting a chilling picture of a man who had crossed the line from fantasy into a horrifying reality. The events of June 6, 2014, are a stark reminder of the darkness that can lurk within the human soul. 
They also serve as a tragic testament to the life of Lisa Hyder, a woman whose existence was brutally cut short by a man consumed by his darkest impulses. As chilling as these events are, they are but half of the story. In the wake of such a horrific act, justice begins its relentless pursuit. The gruesome details of the crime began to unfold as investigators pieced together the horrifying puzzle. The discovery of Lisa Marie Hyder's remains sent shockwaves through the community, and the trail of evidence led straight to Gregory Scott Hale. Hale, a man with a disturbing fascination for horror and gore, was apprehended swiftly. His arrest came as a chilling revelation to those who knew him. The seemingly quiet and reserved man was now under the spotlight for an act of unspeakable atrocity. A trial ensued, bringing to light Hale's disturbing past and his obsession with serial killer Richard Ramirez. The evidence against him was overwhelming. His own admissions, coupled with the physical evidence found at his residence, painted a grim picture of the crime. Hale was charged with abuse of a corpse and premeditated first-degree murder. The court proceedings were intense, filled with gory details of the crime that sent shivers down the spine of all present. The prosecution argued vehemently, presenting the facts in their raw and unfiltered form. The defense, on the other hand, tried to portray Hale as a misunderstood man with peculiar interests, not a monster. But the jury was not swayed. After careful deliberation, they found Hale guilty on all charges. The verdict was a life sentence without the possibility of parole, a fitting punishment for a crime so heinous. The gavel struck, echoing the finality of Hale's fate. The courtroom breathed a sigh of relief as justice was served, offering a small measure of solace to the victim's family. Yet Hale maintains that the truth of his story remains untold. Now, from behind bars, Hale seeks to share his version of events. In a letter penned to the Manchester Times, Hale opens up about the gruesome incident, offering an alternative perspective. He admits to the act of cannibalism, but fervently denies any allegations of advertising personal items on a website. He insists that his interest in horror and gore was not an obsession, but rather a misunderstood fascination. Hale criticizes the press for exploiting his case and painting him as a monster. According to him, the death was accidental, and he even claims to have attempted to revive the victim. He accuses the press and media of presenting a biased narrative, of focusing solely on the grim details of the crime and ignoring his pleas of remorse and regret. In his letter, he requests an interview, an opportunity to share his side of the story, to make the public understand that he is not the monster the media has made him out to be. Whether his words hold any truth, or if they are merely the desperate attempts of a man trying to escape his monstrous deeds, remains to be seen. One thing is certain, the truth, no matter how disturbing, has a way of coming to light.